All right, I wasn't trying to walk up to her. I was I walk up to him. I was trying to climb the stairs. But apparently going anywhere near him leads to an immediate and instant death. So don't do that. Or he will murder the shit out of you. Can I do it over there? I think we're going to go into some King's Quest uh, Space Quest territory of like... I have to say, that battle was a bit short for my taste. Just sudden and abrupt deaths. Williams Henchman. Being from politically ambitious no uh, noble family, William Hamley commands a small army of his own. He likes to keep his three most trusted men by his side. Walter, Hugh Axe, and Ugly, Ugly Gervais. The latter two are knights known for their violence and loyalty. Their names alone strike fear into the hearts of their enemies. Walter was once William's instructor and taught him to fight and ride since William was a boy. Now Walter is his bodyguard and right-hand man. The knights weren't prepared and the peasants scattered off chicken. What I wouldn't do for a good kill right now. That's just all they good. That's they're just unrepentantly awful people. Yeah, apparently, all of them are like, "Oh yeah, I'm gonna kill some people. Kill, kill, kill. Rape, kill, kill." Like just self-proclaimed villains, basically. Like the freaking. They're like uh, Count Olaf from the series of unfortunate events, and like Netflix series version, where he's just like, "Yes, I am the evil guy." He says out loud to everybody, unabashedly. Soaked by rain. I found it. Matthew's piece of cloth. Okay, we have weapons. Now we just need to escape. You're good with horses. Do you think you can ride this one? Uh, I'm not sure. It's quite jumpy from the storm. <coughs> Beautiful. Someone's taking care of it. Hard to believe there is care and kindness in this master. Try petting it? Should I remove the saddle bag? <coughs> Whoa. Easy. Easy now. What are you doing? The horse nearly woke the guard. The knot is too tight. Ah, some oat I found William saddlebags. So we can feed him. That's one way to calm calm him down, hopefully. Oh, you look hungry. Want to eat? It's calm now. Try to mount it, Richard. But where do we go? To Winchester, of course. We need to find Father and talk to the King. They must find out what's happening here. Now climb on. It won't eat forever. Now me. Oi! You there! Stop! Well, now we need to book it. A bit of a chance to reacquaint ourselves a little bit with the environment. Not actually, not really. We can't we can't scroll around or anything. Oh. There's that, though. Nice zoom out. 
There's the Shiring, there's King's Bridge. Okay. The thought that they could catch up with us urged me to ride onward. It rained relentlessly. After a while, Richard's moaning got weaker, but I did not dare look back, for I feared to see William Hamley right at our heels. I forced the horse to go faster, hoping that my brother would not succumb to his wounds. We headed toward Winchester. The king would make things right if we explained them to him. He had to. It wasn't long until Richard almost fell off the horse. Touching his forehead, I realized he had a high fever. His mutilated ear was red, hot, and swollen. A sound startled me. From the thicket of the forest emerged a woman. I was ready to draw the dagger that was flush against my forearm. I asked her to give us her name. This was her forest, she said, so we should be the ones introducing ourselves. I proclaimed that I was the daughter of the Earl of Shiring, traveling with my brother. I can tell your nobility by your manners. She smiled and revealed in turn that she was the wife of the local verderer. Seeing Richard's ear, she said that he needed help. Luckily, their hut was nearby. She offered us food, shelter, and care. Oh, boy. So, total, so take off and book it and hope things work out and hope that he doesn't die on the way. Even though we don't even know if we'll be safe when we arrive where we're going, because who knows what the overall political climate here is, because this is a... This is a setting that relies upon lack of immediate information transmission, which is what how medieval stuff often goes in these storylines, and it's the trap you have, and you might go to a, an entire city that is in flames or has changed leadership and whatnot. But if we trust them, you take two risks. One, you hope that they're not betraying you, because they could just be turn betraying you and they could be doing something horrible. Uh, or two, they could be totally genuine, but stopping leads to you getting cu uh, cut off with, and because who knows if they can are likely to find us here or not. But the brother's in really bad shape, so I'm going to take the risk and trust her to help Richard. We followed her to the hut. It was further than she had led us to believe. There, I helped my brother off the horse and let the woman take the horse's reins. The hut was rather barren, with few furnishings. It was almost as cold as outside, and there was no sign of her husband. Richard dropped onto one of the creaky stools. The woman lit a fire, which came alive with a crackle and gave out a warming glow. Let's promise a re we Well, I was going to say, like, she, uh, promising a reward might get us into some risk where she realizes that we might be valuable, but we already told her that we're nobility, so it's already... It's already come and gone. Let's, ins let's insist on Richard. I raised my voice and repeated more urgently that if we didn't act right now, Richard might die. At my words, the woman seemed to wake up from her absent-mindedness. She nodded towards the fire. There was a sound outside, but she distracted my attention by turning to Richard. She started to explain that to close a wound, one must gently press a hot piece of metal against the flesh. This will stop demons and bad smells from entering the body. The woman's eyes kept darting to the door, so I turned my head to see what it was she was looking for. The moment after I'd turned my head, my own knife was pointing at my face. She'd noticed the dagger in my sleeve and had yanked it out before I knew what was happening. She apologized. It's a tough world and it's eat or be eaten. There was another noise outside. He's here, she said. Run or fight? Run with who? Does Richard come with me or not? That's a hell of an abrupt change. I don't think I can run with Richard, so I don't think I have a choice. Let's fight. 
I swiftly grabbed a splintered board from the ground and pointed it at her in defense. Suddenly, I was grabbed from behind, and the next moment I landed hard on the floor. He examined us and our weapons and broke into laughter. He stepped closer to reach for Richard's sword, but his wife interrupted. We can't sell that. Everyone would know who that sword belonged to. The man grunted in agreement and turned to leave. Before she followed him, she dropped my dagger. Burn out your brother's wound with this, she said, and disappeared. We heard the whinnying of William's horse and the stomping of hooves from outside. We stood frozen until Richard told me to go and have a look. As I did, the outlaws were long on their way, and our mount with them. The hut probably hadn't belonged to them in the first place, but at least it meant a roof over our heads for the night. The fire was still burning. We had no other choice but to trust the word of the outlaw. The heated dagger trembled in my hands. Do it, Ali, I can take it. Richard tried to sound brave. A horrible hissing sound and the smell of burnt flesh filled the hut when the blade touched his ear, but it seemed to work. For a few hours, I guarded the door while Richard slept, but soon I fell asleep too. Okay, that actually went way better than I thought it would. They see they didn't take my dagger or the sword because they can be identified. And William didn't find us. And it's so it seems like they were only interested in thieving. And all they could really steal was the horse. So they stole the horse that we stole ourselves too. So yes, we're horseless, but I may have helped the brother in a way that would not have been done if I had taken the horse and kept going. Just a couple of uh, noble people are just going to have to learn to walk for a while. Continue to Winchester. We walked for two more days with only brief rests in between. But we finally arrived at the city gates of Winchester. Richard was weak, but at least we were still together, and we were sure that together we would find a way to escape this nightmare. Chapter 8, over. What you did when facing Willem, you let, you let Matthew speak for you. You enraged William by serving him dry bread. Was I- was there a better option? Did I miss something? You scolded Richard for attacking William. You successfully escaped Earl's castle. You trusted the woman on the road and got robbed by her. You burnt Richard's wound out and made it to Winchester. I think things went... well? anymore, can they? After all, there are laws in place to protect us here, right? I think so, but we shouldn't risk finding out. Then let's go. Where are you going? To our townhouse, of course. Well, he just booked it right out of there. Okay. Port of King Stephen. Our townhouse. We stayed here often. Father taking care of business. And I. What? The bishop, chancellor, and all the barons at court. One of them must remember us. What did it say? The father taking care of business and I taking care of his guests. What? Oh, we stayed here often. He on business, her taking. Her taking care of the guests. That's just. I, I thought they were individual statements, not conditional upon each other. It's a weird way to present them, because it's, it's, they feel like separate, uh... They feel like they're not one continual sentence. The mint is still illuminated. They must be afraid of thieves stealing all the coin. The cathedral, the door is shut tight. Maybe someone's willing to help here. Should probably be concerned that people seem to just be there. 
Let's see, Winchester Castle, Court of King Stephen. It's the King's Court. Tomorrow we will talk to the King and find Father. You will know what to do. What if it's not safe? How'd you end up over there? I was clicking on the townhouse. Oh, weird. When you click there, it becomes Winchester. But over here, I think it was townhouse over... Oh, okay. Lost track of the boundaries. Ali, there's someone here. Maybe it's father. Do you think so? Well, they must have put him somewhere. I have a bad feeling about this. Come now, before anyone sees us here. Yeah, I'm not excited about there already being somebody in there. Even though it could be the father. Seems like we, 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 if we add ourselves, suddenly we'd be in a lot of trouble. There's a church and a cathedral right next to each other? Huh. Small chapel, never been here before. Father always preferred the cathedral when we came here. Maybe it's a sort of a low... Father, may we come in? I can hear someone. Hello? We're lost and looking for shelter. They don't seem to want us here. Low profile was what I was thinking. It's like, maybe, maybe check out a low profile location. Maybe we won't get caught by anyone important. The roads south seem less traveled. Beyond the wall, it's mostly fields and farmhouses. Evening mass soon. Is this place abandoned? Like the ones we've seen before? The Sh Shekwe, I am guessing. This place is popular with nobles from Shiring, especially the Hamleys. Wait, no, no. Nope. Let's not go to places that are popular with the Hamleys. It's a bad trap to fall into. Go back. Try the house. This is pointless. There must be one kind soul in this town. What is it? Oh, uh, good evening. Um, we're sorry to disturb you, but my brother and I have been through a lot and desperately need shelter for tonight. Mm. Please. Wait here. Are you mad? Do not let them in. They're thieves. What did I say? Oh. Well, that didn't go over well. Not a lot of faith in humanity, huh? Even though, of course, uh, <laughs> we have we have plenty of reason to think that ourselves. Maybe we can ask about the the location of this person. I doubt they're keeping him there. The, the idea is to ask them if they know. Not it's not not assume he's there. There's a warm corner in the back. You can have a blanket, but there will be nothing to eat. Is your wife all right with this? It doesn't matter. The Lord struck her with a troubled mind. She will accept my decision. Thank you. Thank you so much. You're a kind man. When I woke up that morning, I was alone. I hoped that Richard had risen early, maybe to go to the castle. I left to search for him right away. Ah, familiar landscape we've been to before. Richard disappearing is a problem. One of them won't stop looking over to me and keeps clenching his nose. As if they smelled any better. Never seen them before. Must have come with the new king. Of 
recognize those faces. Used to be guests at our table. So they might recognize me then. The far side of the yard, there's the entrance itself. Oh, there's Richard. No one prepared him for a life like this. But together, we will get through this. We have to. Better not. Okay, she doesn't want to explore. Fine. No, don't click on- I didn't mean to click on that person. On our way here, we had to stay at an inn. They made us eat peasant food. Gruel? Not a pinch of meat. Isn't there a law against that? Holy shit, you guys are already insufferable. Alright, it's fine. You heard me, now move along. Get out of my way, guard. Every citizen has the right to petition the king. But the poorer sort are generally not foolish enough to exercise that right. What are you saying? You're talking to the son of the Earl of Shiring. I'm his daughter. If you don't let us pass, we'll have you locked away and make you rot in a dungeon. Like your father, you mean? What? You know where he is? Of course. And you should too, if you're who you say you are. He's in the jail right here in the castle. How do we get there? Go left before the gate and cross the yard. You'll need to talk to the jailer, though. His name is Odo, and he's got deep pockets. Deep pockets? Well, you lower sort cannot expect any favors for nothing. Better get used to it if you want to survive. Now, clear the way. There are people who want to see the king. I could have done this on my own. Just like you could have run away on your own without telling me anything. Shh, hush, Ali. The people are watching us. How's your ear? It's pounding like a drum. I'm sorry. I thought I could talk to the king before you woke. You did so much yesterday. I didn't want to wake you. Please, don't be cross. That was sweet of you, but also very stupid. Oh, don't give me that look. Sorry. Shall we go and see father now? Yes. They're keeping father in the jail. We must go see him. Yeah, we're vulnerable and alone and have no resources and people assume that you're a peasant. Which isn't the worst thing necessarily. But we're a little trapped. Stephen of Loy has been king for nearly a year now and already he has deprived us of everything. If only someone would show him the suffering he has caused. I said left, right? Yeah, go to j right. This is where the jail was before. Did you like what you saw, mistress? Of course not. But my husband seems to be in good health. I hope it'll stay that way. I hope so too, but you know, nowadays good food is just so hard to come by. Oh, you're so kind. That'll help to keep him fed for a while, surely. Take good care of him. I'll be at the market. Will do. Good business, mistress. What are you staring at? Your ear. You should take better care of yourself. What was that all about? I don't know, but we have our own problems, so come on. What that was about was a false reaction. She was pretending to be seeing your ear, when in reality she was probably recognizing you. I was chained to one of those. Chained. Like a dog. Well, you love your dog, so it's not so bad, right? <laughs> Guard called him Odo. Must be short for odious, vile creature. Um, uh, are you the jailer? Your humble servant. What is it? We're... We're here to see our father. He is the Earl of Shiring. Is he? Look like just plain Bartholomew to me. So he's here? Look at us when we're talking to you. How much have you got? We've nothing. So don't bother asking for a bribe. Then you can't see your father. 
Sorry. Um, who was that woman? That'll be two pennies. What? Ah, uh, gotcha. <laughs> That's Meg. Her husband tried to trick a fellow merchant out of his purse. Wasn't good at it. Now he's lost everything. Then where does she get all her coin? She took over his business. Works as a merchant at the market. Funny that she still cares so much for him. I wouldn't. Please, let us see him now. Sorry, can't make an exception. Each time someone wants to see someone, they have to pay. That's the rules. But they're your rules. Right, but that doesn't make them any less rulesy, does it? Must have been dozens so far, each one slipping me a penny. If I let you in for free, the others might think I treated them unevenly, that I am an unjust man. <laughs> Can't have them think that, can I? I'll get a penny and I'll bring it to you as soon as I can. But won't you let us see him now, just for a few moments? Get the penny first. Shouldn't be too hard. One of you must be worth something. How is he? Just tell me that, please. Is he all right? No, he's not. He's dying. Now get out of here. Didn't you hear what he said? Yes, but he was lying. The last time we saw Father, he was very much alive and healthy. Sometimes I wonder what is going on in that head of yours. So how are we going to get a penny? We could beg. Beggars usually ask for food or clothes. I never heard of anyone giving them money. Well, how do people get money? The king gets money from taxes, lords have rents, priests have tithes, shopkeepers have something to sell, craftsmen get wages, and peasants don't need money because they have fields. Apprentices get wages too. So do labourers. We could work. But Ali, I can't work like a common man. I'm the son of an earl. Not anymore. You heard what the jailer said. We're no better than anyone else now. Thirty-two, thirty-three, thirty-four. Are you sure this is right? Don't patronise me, Meg. I just want to be certain. See? You've nothing to worry about. Your business will be in good hands. Let me see yesterday's list again. All right. The good mm. news is we happen to immediately meet, uh, encounter somebody who would have money because they're a merchant's wife that 13. became the merchant themselves. Uh, except they seem to recognize us, which raises the question of whether or not they're going to turn us in or abuse us or in some way wrong us. Also, this woman immediately caught my attention because I thought that she was the one who robbed us, but she might not be, or at the very least I can't. I don't, see, I don't know if I can interact with them necessarily. 